Hello chess fans and welcome to another video on the ABC Chess Analysis channel. Here we have one brilliant game played by former world champion Vladimir Kramnik and the current US champion Samuel Shakrand. Uh, Vladimir renounced his retirement for classical, classical chess that happened just two days after he finished Tata Steel Masters in Waikanze. This is the um, last game played in that tournament. So we have move C4, C6 and knight to F3, D5. G3, G6, Queen to A4, and after that D4 played by Black. So Bishop goes to G2, Bishop to G7, and after that D3, Knight to D7, and Castle. After that Black goes with the Knight on the edge of the board, so he played Knight to H6, which is one very interesting move. Uh, much more natural looks to play Knight to F6, which uh, take control over some central squares but he chooses to play knight to h6 because he wants to uh, keep opening his bishop for support on the square e5 so he will support pushing pawn on e5 in the future and here we have knight goes to d2 after that castle and b4 e5 and here white goes with the c5 move which opens the square c4 for a knight and after that a6 and knight c4, f6 and queen to b3. One very uh, good move because he moves the queen on the open diagonal and that's the same diagonal with the white queen and the black king. So if the black plays some passive move like a uh, rook to b8 for example, uh, then there is a one discovery with the check. So for example knight goes to d6 or knight can, can take the pawn on e5. Also, so king goes to uh, h8, and now it's a good moment for a knight f6. But the only uh, problem is that knight on h6, so bishop first can take that, and after bishop take it back on h6, then it's a triple attack with the knight on f6. So king is under attack, queen and the bishop, so he needs to take it, and queen takes. So it's clear that white is uh, white is winning this position, and after queen b3. Knight to f7 was played, so here white decided to attack the central squares and the central pawns here on the d4 and the e5s. He goes with the e3, d takes e3 and the bishop takes e3, king to h8, one prophylactic move, and after that one not the usual move, a rook from a to e1. Uh, it's much more logical to move the rook from the f1 to e1 and the rook from a1 to d1 but here Vladimir chose to play rook a d1 and after that rook e8 was played knight to a5 opens the square c4 for the other other knight and rook to e7 because uh, knight on f7 was under attack from the queen and here is the d4 move after that e4 was played and knight goes to d2 and f5 so here one choose to play uh, d5 move, which is a good move, but maybe uh, it's uh, he's uh, in, in, a, in a rush. So there is no need to rush in this position. And he could try something like knight to c4 and after knight to f6, for example, which will stop the d5. So let's see that line. Knight goes to f6, after that knight b6 attacks the rook. And the rook can choose between squares b8 and the square a7. So if he goes to b8, then that rook is uh, under attack with the bishop from f4 square, and there is no way to get out. So uh, in the position like this one, so if he goes to a7, then uh, that uh, rook is uh, out of game forever. So after the f5, he played d4 immediately, and after c takes, queen takes. And then the queen goes to e8 square, and after that c6. Uh, so if he takes, it's also one option. But uh, after queen takes, that's um, that's a very good position for a white. So here he uses the moment for a tempo move and goes with the knight to f6, attacks the queen, and also increase the pressure on the c6. So after queen to c5, b takes c6, and uh, knight goes from d2 to c4, bishop to e6. So here is a moment maybe 
to take the pawn on c6 but there is no time for that so for example if the queen takes on c6 then the, just bishop goes to d7 attacks the queen and if the queen goes back then bishop b5 and the white is in a really big problem because he doesn't know what to do with his white diagonal uh, because that bishop on b5 looks very strong uh, he will attack the rook in, in some moment also he's preparing for a rook to c8 and increase the pressure on the knight on c4 so uh, that was a good idea to take it with the queen also if you try to take it with the knight from a5 to c6 then rook goes to c7 pins the queen and after knight a uh, from c4 goes to a5 then bishop to d7 and the black will take some material here so after bishop to e6 rook c1 was played and bishop to d5 to, to defend the pawn on c6 bishop goes to d4 and rook b8 a4 because threat was to play rook to b5 and to trap the queen so rook to e6 knight b6 and bishop goes to f8 attacks the queen so queen retreat back on c3 increase the pressure on the f6 so, so really big pressure on the f6 knight so after king to g8 uh, white was able to take the knight on the f6 but maybe that's not so good let's see why so if the bishop takes then rook takes the knight on the b6 square and uh, increase the pressure on, uh, on the b4 pawn so if the bishop goes back d4 attacks the rook then rook takes and he's a pawn knight so that wasn't a good moment to take the knight on the f6 so he goes with the knight from a to c4 and after that knight d7 of a nice trade and a5 to support the knight on the b6 uh, knight d6 was played and after that knight takes d6 bishop takes d6 and rook from f goes to d1 after that bishop takes on the b6 a takes b6 and bishop to uh, e5 so it's always good to trade um, opponent's good piece for for your piece which is not so good on square uh, b6 like that bishop so bishop takes e5 rook takes e5 and then queen goes to e3 uh, after that we have queen to f7 and rook goes to a1 attack the pawn on a6 so queen goes to b7 and queen d4 was played so rook rook was under attack rook or three on the e7 after that uh, b5 one very interesting move so if the a pawn take on b5 then rook can go on a7 and if he takes with the c pawn then uh, this bishop is hanging so here black choose to sacrifice the piece and he take that with the c pawn and queen takes d5 queen takes d5 rook takes d5 and after that rook takes b6 so here we have one interesting position where white is playing with the bishop on uh, g2 square and black is playing with the and three pounds in return pound on the a6 pound on the b5 and the pound on the e4 square so let's see which one uh, was better with the coordination with his pieces so let's see uh, rook gives a check on the d8 so centralization of the king on the f7 square and after that rook a8 uh, attacks the pound on a6 two times so rook e6 e and rook to a7 gives the check uh, king goes to f6 rook takes the pawn on h7 so he thought that um, he, he has enough time to uh, take the pawn on h7 and after that b4 very quick pawn so rook goes back to c7 b3 and bishop to f1 after that rook from e to c6 offer one rook for trade after trading rook on the c6 square rook to b1 attacks the pawn so rook defends and here was a good moment to to accept the draw for example if the bishop takes the pawn on a6 sacrifice the bishop for two pawns after rook takes and the rook takes b3 obviously uh, that's a draw position three and three on, on the king side with the rook for both players that that that's mostly draw position but here in this position uh Vlad goes with a move bishop to c4 and after b2 uh, bishop to a2 which controls both uh, both pounds pawn on the b2 and the pawn on the a5 which can be pushed uh, to the square a3 so a5 king to f1 a4 and king to e2 
a3, king d3, and after that rook to c6, cut the king, so king cannot cross the c file. So h4, and king e5, rook to e1, because this rook is free to go somewhere, and bishop is covering the square b1. So king d4, after that bishop to b1, rook to c3, rook h1, and one very interesting move, rook to d3. Uh, he's sacrificing the rook, but white is not able to take it, because if he takes, uh, then black can just take it with the pawn, and he will promote these two pawns. So, because the white king is unable to catch them, he cannot cross the squares uh, c2 or c1. So after rook to e3, check, white cannot take, so he moves the king on c2 square, and after that he repeats, check on c3, king goes to d3, and then rook to f3, king e2, and the rook to d3 once again, so h5 was played, uh, that was the some kind of silk swung, there is no good move which white can play, so he can just repeat the move with the rook, he tried with the h5, g takes h5, and then uh, king e1 was played, so if he tried to take it, so if he moves the rooks here and take it, then rook c3, he cannot stop idea with uh, rook c1 and promoting because there is no rook to, to covering c1 square and also with support of the king from the b2 square on the other hand if uh, in this position if he tried to play something like bishop to uh, a2 then king c3 and king goes to c2 which is not so good or or, or if he goes with the bishop to b1 uh, then first give a check with the rook on d2 if the king goes to e Three square, then rook c2, and one one more time idea with the rook on uh, c1. So in this position, uh, white goes with the rook, with the king on e1, and after that the rook goes to c3. Try to give a check on c1, so king goes to uh, d2, and after that f4 was played. So uh, here white goes with the bishop to a2. Instead of that, if he tried to take this take it on f4 square, then rook goes to c1, one very interesting line, so if the rook takes, and uh, b takes, promote, king takes, and then uh, white cannot catch the h pawn, which goes very quickly to take the queen on h1 square, so after f4, e3, uh, so for, sorry, for first bishop to a2, and then e3, so f takes e3, f takes e3 to check the king and after king to e2 rook gives a check on c2 and in this position uh, Vladimir resigned because there is no good move to play so if he goes down with his king on d1, e1 or f or the f1 square then uh, rook gives a check on e1 trade the rooks and uh, or take it for free and he's in completely winning position he will promote one of these uh, pawns or if he goes up to f3 square then rook goes to f2 and that that that's the checkmate so in this position after rook gives a check on a c2 so he simply resigned and that was his last game played on the classic time control so thank you very much i hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video bye bye